Mustard. I'm Joseph B. Cutler, FBI agent, and your host for this gangbuster case. Robert James Quirely and his accomplices staged a pair of record-breaking bank holdups in California and Nevada. In fact, the entire nation was alerted before Quirely's career was ended. In just a moment, I'll tell you more about it. Middle-aged Robert James Quirely, mild in appearance, the unquestioned leader, had a long record of crime and prison terms behind him. In a little town in the wild southeastern area of Oklahoma, he plotted a western campaign with Robert Quirely, Jr., who had a pretty wife named Nancy. Young Quirely had a record of petty thievery. Walter Murdoch, with a record of bootlegging and a blue discharge from the army. Murdoch, part owner of a small bar, was willing to pull up stakes because he had a desire to get a home for his wife and two children, no matter how. And there was shrewd, hot-headed Roy Jackson, who, despite a series of scrapes, had managed to dodge serious conflict with authorities. After many weeks of planning their first job, Quirely, as the leader, decided the best prospect was the P.L. Smith Bank in Oregon. Quirely knew that Monday, May 5th, was the annual Pioneer Day and Rodeo celebration. In the morning, they held the parade. Cowboys, cowgirls, Hunters, trappers, everyone was there, except Quirely and Jackson. And the modern miners panned their gold in the middle of the street, Quirely and Jackson got in the act, pleasure before business. Nor did they enter the beard and whistling contest. They preferred to grow theirs the easy way. Right friendly, the fellow we stole the car from to give us this bag. It's going to be a hefty withdrawal. Must have been a sales. Petal flower. Yeah, and we'll fill it with dough. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's right. I, uh, I got us these fake whiskers, Roy. Just like in the movies, huh? Mm. Yeah. Just like Halloween. <laughs> it was mighty thoughty of them to hold this affair for us. Mm. Everybody in town's growing beards. We might have been fine without one. I... Right. What's the idea, Quirely? Just showing you. Don't matter what we're wearing in the bay. Yeah. Guess when you're looking down the barrel of a shotgun, everything else looks out of focus. <laughs> yeah. Sure hope that Murdoch don't chicken out on us. If he don't pick us up, it's a long hike through this bush. This is rougher than Oklahoma. That's old better show. Stuff. Say, you look like the real McCoy. In that getup, you might win a prize. I aim to win first prize. All the cash you got. Now look, fun is fun, but this is carrying things a bit too far. We ain't playing. All right, this is a holdup. Get him over against the wall. Come on, get moving. Do as he says. We don't want anyone to get hurt. Get to moving. Up against the wall. Face the map. I don't want to make this business messy. You and me are going to be buddies. Where's the president? He isn't here, luckily. I'm the manager. Well, you'll do just dandy. Let's do a job on the ball. Right there. Kick me that bag. 
Pick that up, Mr. Manager. Open it up. Put it on the barrel. Get in there. Start cramming that stuff into the poke. Don't stop till I say, whoa. That's all there is. Well, then how come I'm wasting my time? Come on. Take it off, man. Fasten it up. Give it to me and come on, get over there with the others. Keep facing that map. Call out them names for about five minutes if you want to stay healthy. Let's hear you, Mr. Banker. What? Vancouver. Seattle. That's fine. Now, keep it up. Reno. Cheyenne. Right on the button. Yeah. But we ain't at the end of the furry yet, Roy. We should have brought Murdoch with us. You lost your marbles. That button headed the head of street for now. Besides, he's the only one grunt smaller than a horse, and they'd spotted him quicker than tarnation. Picking us up tomorrow night's about the only thing he can handle. He did help us find a bumper crop. I still think we ought to shake him soon. We will. We will. I sure hate to leave that shotgun. No worry about it. With all the money we got, we can steal another one. <laughs> What's the trouble, officer? Do you mind stepping outside a minute, please? I'd like to see your license and registration. There you are, officer. Hmm. Where are you headed, Mr. Murdoch? Taking the kid over to Myrtle Creek to the ball game. Kid? In the back seat. Oh. <laughs> and if I have any time, I want to look at some real estate. Well, there's been a bank hold up this morning, but uh, you're too big to be one of them. And I guess the youngster's too small. <laughs> <laughs> That's a good one. Here you are. How far are you, Mr. Murdoch? I, uh, I wouldn't pick up any hitchhikers in this area. No, sir, I certainly won't. And if I see anything suspicious, I'll let you know. Do that, will you? Yes, sir, you can depend on it. You'll wear off the numbers, Squirrely. I like counting money. Pay cut for murder? Yeah. I favor it. There's still about five grand. Plenty of acres for a blind hog to snoot up. If he gets too prosperous, he'll buy that house he's always yapping about, and we'll lose a good spotter. Bet that's him now. Yeah, right. That's Murdoch stumbling around. Come on in, Fatso. Howdy, partner. Showed them how, didn't we? We. Oui. Listen to them, fat stoop. What? Shut up. We take the risk and you get in on the gravy. Roy, I brought the kid along for the ride. He's in the car. You shouldn't have. Let's get going. You can catch a California bus at Grants Pass or Roseburg. Too risky. You can carry us into Sacramento. But that's not in the plans. The kid will love the ride. And we'll be one big happy family. Pick. Don't you trust us? 
Yeah, I, I, I trust you. Put it away before I change your mind. Weeks went by without any worthwhile clues or leads. Murdoch, unsuspected, remained with his family and relatives. Joyce, some mighty good buyers here. There's one with two bedrooms and a den. Looks mighty good. I have a feeling we'll have a house of our own in no time. I'm sick of living with relatives. Jackson and Quirely were in the Bakersfield area. Who took that last drink? You did, Pa. Well, quit messing up the floor. That she's got enough work to do. She's my wife, not your maid. Your handbag. Can it? Roy, take a ride and get another jug. I'll get more than one. No use having to go back. Well, you go with him and get lost. Nancy, honey. I mean it. I don't want you going talking to Robert. There's any more trouble. Trouble? Oh, trouble. That's the kind of trouble I could get Robert. <laughs> now. And Quarley was to get that kind of trouble for his son. For Roy Jackson didn't get back that night with a bottle. He made the mistake of stopping off in a bar, picked a fight with a total stranger, and then used a knife in the brawl. Being behind bars in Bakersfield put a crimp in Quarley's plans. That mustard head Jackson got himself jugged just when we had something good. Now, anyway, this is going to build you up, son. This will set you up. Murdoch bird dub this one for us. It's a bank right across the street from his brother's pool. Now, it's not going to be any trouble at all. We'll do it just like we did the last one. We'll use the overhauls and the caps and the goggles. Why, <laughs> this will be the best thing we've ever done. A hundred grand, maybe. Yeah? A hundred grand. A hundred grand. <laughs> Shortly after 11 a.m., Friday, August 29th, Barley and his son entered the bank. Murdoch watched from his brother's pool room directly across the street. Mr. Barber, I need your signature on these letters. Can't they wait? Not if they're going out by the noon mail. Howdy. You're with you in a minute. I beg your pardon. I'm, I'm in a hurry. I've got something to show you. Put your hands down. Just get up natural like. Lead me into the vault. And play it straight. Open up. Hi. I don't know the combination. Who does? Only the president. I got you pegged for the president. Wrestle with that thing before I let the daylight through you. All right, I'll try, but I don't know the combination. I wouldn't do that, Curly. Take it soft and easy, or I'll start squeezing the trigger. Hot again. Real good. What'll they do to Mr. Barber? That depends on him. Looky, friend. You had your chance. Please. Please don't shoot Mr. Barber. It depends. You know how to open this contraption? No. Too bad, girlie. You might have saved his life. Don't! 
kind of young to be a bank president, ain't she? You ever rob a bank before, girl? No. Well, you can start right now. Fill it up. $7,500 was the largest in Oregon's 100-year history. The shots fired by the parking lot attendant failed to stop the bandits. Roadblocks were set up under the direction of Sergeant Carl Benson. Immediate questioning at the bank revealed similarities between the two big holdups. All right, let's start again from the beginning. How were they dressed? What size? Anything you can remember. Well, uh, the little one was a little taller than I. Five foot seven. He was mean. His companion must have been about... Uh, Six foot one. Uh, they both wore goggles. Oh, I'd like to get my hands on that little one. Mm -hmm. You say they were both wearing overalls, railroad caps, goggles, dangerous and vicious. Yes. I only saw one man. He kept me well occupied. Miss Newton here was very thoughtful. Although I personally felt the man with the gun was bluffing, I wasn't going to open the vault. Well, definitely he would have shot Mr. Barber down in cold blood. Isn't that the phrase? <laughs> yes, that's right. True criminal types. I'm certain they wouldn't have hesitated to have used their weapons. None of this is going to return the money to the bank. $57,500. It was nice, fresh money from Washington. Uh, mostly fives, tens, and twenties. Oh, yes, and the serial numbers were mostly in sequence. Oh, uh, I have a copy of them. Wouldn't that help? Yes, it would. Sweet time, Patsy. Where you been? I... What's Nancy doing here? Told you to come alone. But Quarley, I... Get out of that car. I'm gonna let the air out of that fat carcass right now. Lay off, Pa. No funny stuff with Nancy here. Come on, get in the car. Lucky for you that Nancy is here. Give me a drink. I didn't have time to get any whiskey. I am gonna let you have it. Pa, with what we've got, you can swim in whiskey when Murdoch gets us to California. And I'm ready to go. All right, son. But I got a feeling we're all gonna be mighty sorry I let you talk me out of this. Quarley's feeling came true. Murdoch, in fear for his life, broke with the gang. He bought his dream home with other people's hard-earned dollars. An alert teller spotted the serial numbers and called the FBI. We've had a tough time trying to trace you, Murdoch. You know, you uh, never should have passed these hot bills to that real estate agent for that house you bought. But I tell you, it was a mistake. The serial numbers on these bills and the fingerprints don't agree. You're in a jam, Murdoch. Why take the rap alone? Okay, okay. It was Quarley and his son, Robert. Now you're getting smart. Murdoch, we'll see what we can do. Sorry. No peddlers allowed. Robert James Quarley? Uh, he moved, moved about three months ago. It sure did leave this place in a mess, too. 
Federal Bureau of Investigation. Well, howdy. Sure sorry you fellas got here too late. We don't think we did, Mr. Quarley. We'd like to see your driver's license or some identification. You bet. I'll get it and be right back. We'll go with you, Mr. Quarley. Save your time on your return trip just in case you aren't the right man. Nice try, but it won't work. Murdoch gave us a full confession and a good description of you. Murdoch? Murdoch? Is he a little peaked, wheezing, rat-like kind of man? No, he's a big, fat-like kind of man. And the one who always furnished the transportation. Only this time, it'll be to a federal prison. Oh, I was afraid for a minute there you had the wrong Murdoch. Mind if we search the premises? Not unless you get a warrant. We thought of that too, Carly. Now you can make us work to find the evidence or face the inevitable and show us where it is. Oh, I got some money. Maybe some of it's hot. A friend of mine gave it to me. How much did he give you? A couple of thousand. I could use some friends like that. Actually, it was a loan. I'm going to pay him back. I doubt that, Quarling. I don't get you. I'll make it real simple. It pays mighty low where you're going. Let's get your coat. Quarley was tried for his California crimes and received sentences from five years to life. He was returned to Oregon, pleaded guilty, and was given 20 to 25 year sentences to be served before the California term. Jackson pleaded not guilty and argued his own case. Robert James Quirely, do you realize you have sworn to tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth, so help you? Roy, I do. You was here when I done it. That's right, Robert. And do you also know that the penalty for lying from the witness stand is a uh, stiff fine and possible imprisonment? I do for certain, and that's a fact. Okay. Now, Robert, I know you don't want to go to jail, so I'm going to ask you a question, and I want you to give me a truthful answer. Was I with you when you robbed the P.L. Smith Bank? Which one was that? Hmm? Now, that's where you put the barrel of the gun under the fellow's chin. Uh, according to your testimony. No, Roy, you wasn't. Hadn't seen you for weeks. Judge, he's as innocent as a babe. Since Quarley was the only man who could make positive identification of Jackson as being present at the first holdup, his evidence had a telling effect on the jury. Now, uh, Fatso, I want to ask you. <laughs> Mr. Jackson, you refrain from personalities. Oh, begging your pardon, Your Honor, it just kind of slipped out. <laughs> that matter of habit. Uh, you testified that you wasn't in the bank at the time of the holdup. Of course I wasn't. Uh, just answer yes or no. Oh, uh, did you actually see me in the bank during the robbery? No, but you had some of the money when I picked you up at the cabin. Well, proving I had some of the stolen cash is a different matter. All I'm asking you is, did you see me rob the bank? No, but as now I... That's said... all, Your Honor. Witness dismissed. I rest my case. Jackson was able to gain a hung jury, but the second trial resulted in his conviction and a sentence to 20 years at McNeil Island. Quarley and Jackson threatened to escape and kill Murdoch. Quarley did manage the escape, but he was killed just outside of Redding, California, before he could locate or harm Murdoch, who had finished serving an 18-month sentence in a federal prison in Texas. Young Robert James Quarley was apprehended, convicted, and sentenced to 20 years by Oklahoma federal court. Now, in just a moment, gangbusters will present another clue to a person still at large and wanted by the police. Attention. Attention to all citizens and police. Wanted and still at large, Jose B. Uh, escaped federal prisoner, age 52, height 5 feet 4 and 1 half inches, weight 142 pounds. Scar on left eyebrow, repeating scar on left eyebrow. Jose B. Uh, alias Joe Bella, alias B. Uh, Jose, alias Frank Martinez. Then scar on left side of chin, repeating. Then scar on left side of chin. Jose Villa, convicted of desertion, petty larceny, shoplifting, assault, vagrancy, burglary, theft, and numerous other violations. Jose Villa, escaped federal prisoner. If you have any information concerning this clue, please notify your local police, the FBI, 
or gangbusters at once. Next week, another authentic gangbusters case taken from authentic police files and records. Until then, on behalf of the police, we invite you to join us. Gangbusters, created by Phillips H. Lord. The case you have heard tonight was based upon police records, court records, and personal interviews.